Hello everyone and welcome back to the third episode in our CSS Grid mini-series. Now in this video we are going to be talking about some extra formatting uh, kind of CSS properties that we can apply to create our grid besides the um, traditional ones like grid template columns and rows um, and stuff like that that we've been using. So one of the possibilities is to use a new um, property called grid template area. Um, and that is one way to quickly mock up grid kind of layouts. And then there is also grid auto fit in minmax in order to actually make our grids kind of change their layout as the screen changes its size. And I'll kind of show you what that means in a bit. So we're going to go ahead and start off by opening up our website code here. And then we're going to open our live server by hitting the go live button here. And then, as you can see, we left off here uh, just with a 12, or I think this was a 14-item grid, right? Yeah, 14-item grid, and I kind of renamed, you know, everything is grid 8 here. But this was just to show kind of the fineness that you can get when, um, when creating your uh, grid layouts. But we're going to actually just leave four kind of items here, and we're just going to say a header, and then a side uh, of some sort, and then maybe... Um, main and then we will have our footer and then we're going to give these all different IDs so again we're going to give the footer an ID of footer main ID of main and the aside the ID of aside and then we're going to come right here into style and let's go ahead and create selectors for all of them aside main and then finally footer now, um, so far, like I said, we've been using these grid template columns and rows to actually lay out our website, but um, there actually is another way that we can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and start by changing this to 12 instead of 14 so that there's 12 columns and there are, um, let's make this three rows for now, 12 columns and three rows. Now, in order to um, use this, we're going to use something called, uh, or in order to do what we want, we're going to use something called grid template area. Now, this is generally recommended for mocking up designs, and mocking up designs means making something very quickly to see how it looks, and then in the future changing it to look different. Uh, because, yeah, th this is just like a really quick way to create a grid layout. So I'm going to go ahead and start by saying grid template area, or areas, my bad. And the way we actually make this work is we want to um, create kind of a number of what they're called strings. If you've watched my introduction to, uh, or my JavaScript for Beginners tutorial series, um, this is called a string. It's encased in um, double quotes, basically. And we are going to create a very simple layout. So we're going to say h space h, you know, we're going to do that 12 times. I think that's 12 times. Uh, yeah, looks about right. And then we're going to type our aside here, and then we're going to have our aside here. Um, and actually, we're actually going to move. So there's only three strings because there are three rows in our grid. And then you can probably already see, um, I'm actually visually building out our layout right here. So we're going to have our main like that. Main, 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 all the way there to the end. And then we're going to finally have our footer. So notice our um, design is kind of like our header goes across the top, main goes in the middle, and footer goes on the bottom with the aside being on the side of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And notice it didn't change anything. But the moment I come here to our header selector and I type in grid template and I put a colon, if I give this a colon of, or an H and save, um, or at least it should, or my bad, grid template area, um, Whoops, I think I did something slightly off here. Let me quickly look up. So yeah, grid template area is supposed to look like that. And then on the other thing, right, my bad. So instead of grid template, it's just grid area. And I save that and notice that our header does this, which is a little off. Um, let me quickly see what's going on here. So we're supposed to have a display grid, height 250, grid template areas is like that. Um, right, 
Huh, I'm not actually sure what is going on here. Let's just try to quickly fill in everything else. A, and then grid area is M, and then grid area is F. And let's see if that fixes it. Nope, okay. Uh, so yeah, I just realized that's the problem. I forgot to put a semicolon at the end. So yeah, notice just one little character can break everything. But perfect, now that I've saved this, notice we actually have the exact layout that we created here in our string. Um, and actually it doesn't have to be double quotes, it could be single quotes, which I guess my editor defaults to. But um, yeah, either way, you want to have all of these uh, kind of layouts in a string. And this A, and then A, and then A defines our aside, which is right here. And then we have the header going across the top, the main going across the middle, and the footer going across the bottom, just like we've defined here. And like I said, this is generally used for making quick mock-up layouts. And notice when we resize, we make it bigger, we make it smaller, it kind of grows and shrinks along with, um, along with our screen, which is pretty nice. And then like, if I wanted to, for example, expand our A to take up two columns, I just move that and I save it, and then boom, suddenly the aside is now bigger. So that's really cool. We can actually um, use this property in CSS to specify our layouts visually so that you as the designer can quickly update, um, update your design. Now one quick note here is you can't actually, um, there, you have to have your layouts in a certain way in order to get them to work. For example, if I put an H here and make this A kind of like in this shape, it'll break everything like you saw. Um, and the reason for that is that the layouts need to be in a square or a rectangle of some sort. They can't like be some odd shape uh, like this. If I want to put an H here, then the A is like this square down here, but then it sticks up. It's not allowed. And if I save it, it'll kind of break everything. So I'm going to go ahead and save that again. So yeah, that was grid template area. Now, um, another kind of topic with grid that I was thinking about was our... Um, quickly check this off, was our grid auto fit in minmax. Now this comes into play mainly when we want to resize our window. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly just reset our thing and say grid one, and then let me just create like six of these, like that. And then let's just quickly rename them. Perfect, there we go. So now we have our six grid items and I'm gonna come back here to our style sheet and I'm going to remove, or no, I already removed the grid template area. I'm going to remove these selectors here. They're no longer applicable. So yeah, now we have a standard 12 column grid with six items. And notice <clears throat> when, I, uh, when I make this bigger, the items get bigger and all that. As we've kind of been, um, as we've all kind of like <clears throat> seen over the last couple of videos. But another way to actually do our design is to keep our grid uh, kind of items a uniform size. For example, remember in the beginning, what we did is we could do 100 pixels. Um, and that's my bad. Uh, repeat 12 times 100 pixels here. And we could actually specify the size of our grid items. And notice when we make our window bigger, the grid items do not get bigger along with our window. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Though it's a bit dry. But um, so yeah, that's the original way that we specified our grid items. But uh, we can actually, you know, again, specify it with a standard size. And then we can use something called auto fit. And the reason why we can use this auto fit or auto dash fit. Um, and let me actually, to prove, to kind of make my point, I'm going to need more grid items. So let's just like copy this six number six over and over. Perfect. Okay. So notice we've gotten to the point where it overlaps. And with the way grid works is when we just want to repeat 12 times, um, and then we create a bunch of grid items here. Um, notice that when we like they kind of expand past our um, they kind of expand past here. And also, let me let me actually change this. There we go. Uh, they again they expand as much as they can. Which if it's twelve, they'll expand all the way here. But when I change this to auto fit, this is a way of adding responsiveness to our website. 
Because notice, again, when I had it at 12 times 100 pixels, they would go off screen and you would have to scroll in order to see them. Um, but when you use auto fit, it basically constrains your grid items to the size of the screen. So as the screen gets bigger, it will try to fit more items onto the column, up to 12, of course, because, or no, no, actually not up to 12, because we removed 12 here. So it'll keep trying to fit more items on this column um, as, as much as it can. And when it gets smaller, it'll start shrinking them. Uh, now the detractor or the kind of downside to this method is notice we have now some white space here on the right side. And that is where the min-max property comes into play. So instead of just having our items at 100 pixels, what we could do is we could have it be 100 pixels minimum. And when there is white space, all of the items grow a tiny bit in order to take up that uh, missing space. And the way that we can do that is we create a min-max and then we wrap our 100 pixels in it, and we say either min max of 100 pixels or one fraction unit. And if I save this, notice that now, as the thing gets smaller, they'll, they'll kind of shrink, and then once it hits 100 pixels, then it'll just, you know, it'll remove another item. So basically, there's never any white space, but also the items will try to be 100 pixels as much as they can be. So this is like a smoother kind of grid resize. So yeah, this is um, pretty much all I had planned for this video. There were just some kind of miscellaneous formatting topics that are, you know, not necessarily too obscure because this is used for mocking data and then this is used all the time if you need to actually resize your grid dynamically as the screen gets bigger or smaller. So I didn't want to skip these. So yeah, I kind of tossed them into this miscellaneous topics video. Um, if you want to see more videos like this about grid and just in general tutorials, uh, you can check out the playlist linked in the description uh, where I'm uploading daily. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.